In the previous episodes of the Flight School and Ground School series, we looked at how to climb and descend an aircraft. And while it's important to know how to climb and descend, but it's also important to know how to turn an aircraft because that is important to be able to navigate the aircraft. Now, more about navigation and how do you navigate an aircraft in a future video. But in today's uh, fourth episode of Ground School series, we will be solely looking at how to turn the aircraft, what's the theory behind it, and what causes an aircraft to turn. Uh, so, if you are ready, fasten your seat belts because we are ready for takeoff. Aviators and welcome back to yet another episode, the fourth in the Ground School series on the channel Flight Tuber. And my name is Elias Ghar, and I talk about interesting aviation facts, aircraft knowledge, theory, just like in this video. So if you are interested in aviation and such similar topics, you might want to consider subscribing. In the previous episodes, we saw that there are four forces acting on an aircraft, and two of them were one was lift acting upwards and weight acting downwards. And while we saw in the previous videos how they helped uh, climb and descend an aircraft. But uh, you know the same force, the lift force that is acting upwards also helps an aircraft to turn and how do we do that is just by tilting this upward force in the sideways direction. So if you want to turn right, we'll tilt the lift force to the right and if you want to turn left, obviously we'll tilt the lift force to the left. And if you're asking that by tilting this lift force, how does the aircraft as a whole turn? And the answer for that is once this lift force is tilted, uh, from your class 12th maths and physics, you know that there's something known as vector resolution. So this lift, this tilted lift force gets resolved into two components. That is one is vertical component and the other is the horizontal component. And this horizontal component acting in the sideways direction is the main force responsible for uh, the whole aircraft being able to turn in that direction. Now this turn is not a really tight and sharp turn, rather it's in an arc. That's in a, in a circular manner. And why is it in an arc? Uh, to understand it better, just imagine that one of your friend, you know, he's tied up with a rope and he's running across laterally in front of you and you just pull on to the rope towards yourself. Now that friend, that friend, he won't just, you know, straight away come towards you, but rather he'll be following an arc. That is the same way, that is the same reason why an aircraft also follows an arc in a turn. And now the next question arises is that how do we tilt this lift force in the first place? And the answer to that in a simple way is obviously that you tilt the whole aircraft so that the lift points in a tilted direction. And the next question obviously is how do you tilt the whole aircraft? And the answer to that is obviously explained in the previous video in the first or second episode of Flight School series where I talked about different uh, flight control surfaces and the answer to that is obviously the ailerons. Uh, so for a detailed explanation, watch that video out. But for a quick uh, brief, uh, you know, revision, uh, basically, you know, uh, ailerons deflect in such a way that lift on one wing is reduced, lift on the other wing is increased and that is how the aircraft tilts and the lift force also tilts and the aircraft initiates a turn. And now this tilting of the whole aircraft and then it being able to turn is known as banking or banking the aircraft. It reminds me of the concept of banking of road that I uh, you know, learned in my class 12 physics. Did you learn about that concept? Let me know in the comments. As you guys might have already heard me saying this in the previous episode that nothing comes for free, everything comes with a price tag and the price that we pay in this uh, scenario is a loss of lift. So how that happens is basically in a straight and level flight, lift and weight are equal and opposite to each other and that's how aircraft is able to maintain straight and level flight. I talked about that in a previous video, but in a turn, when once the lift is tilted towards the side, it gets resolved into its horizontal and vertical components and you know that is when the vertical component gets lesser than the weight. So the vertical component of the lift is lesser than the weight, the weight is more and that is why from the same video you can, you can know that aircraft starts to descend. Now if you want to carry out a descending turn, then that is an ideal situation for you. But if you want to carry out a turn at a level flight, then you have to compensate for this loss of lift in the vertical direction by some means and what those means are I'll be telling you in the next video on the flight school series. And if you guys are getting any value out of this video so far, why don't you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and also make sure to share this video with like-minded aviation enthusiasts 
whomever you know. Now continuing our discussion about the turns, we just don't want to randomly turn, we also want to know and control how fast or slow we are turning or simply put the rate of turn. And how do you do that is basically just using your bank angle. So the shallower your bank angle, so for example a 5 or 8 or 10 degrees, the shallower is your uh, you know arc and the smaller is your rate of turn, you won't be turning as fast. And exactly on the contrary, if your bank angle is steep, so about 15 or 30 degrees or you know more than 30 degrees for example then the tilt is more your turn will be much more tighter and in turn your rate of turn is much more faster you'll be turning much more faster talking about the rate of turn there are certain set standard uh, rates of turns or how fast or slow you are turning your aircraft and the most common of them is a rate one turn and rate one turn is basically just three degrees per second. So if your aircraft was pointing in northern direction, you would be tilting your aircraft in such a bank angle that it gives you a rate of turn of three degrees per second. That is every degree your aircraft knows will be changing a direction of three degrees from the north, right? So that is three degrees per second. And if you do your maths right, and if you do the calculations, uh, it turns out that a three degree uh, rate of turn gives you one complete circle. 360 degree turn takes two minutes and 180 degree turn that is, you know, uh, reversing your direction takes uh, one minute. And the next is a rate two turn, which is six degree per second and so on. It's, it's very simple. Rate one half turn is halfway between rate one and rate two turn. In your training, you'll be practicing different rates of turns from shallow to really steep. You'll be tilting your aircraft to as high as 45 degrees. That's a really steep turn. But the main standard and most commonly used throughout the airline flying and in your instrument flying is a rate one turn of three degrees per second. Now one thing to note here is that uh, how much to tilt to reach that three degree per second is not fixed. It depends upon how fast your aircraft is. So if you are getting a rate one turn for a certain bank angle, for that same bank angle, if you increase your speed, you no, no longer will remain at rate one turn. So there's a formula to know how much tilt or bank angle do you need to get a rate one turn, which is dependent upon your uh, airspeed. And the formula is very simple. Put true airspeed divided by 10 plus seven. So for example, if you are cruising at 100 knots, then 100 by 10 is 10 plus 7, 17. So if you're cruising at 100 knots, the tilt or bank angle that you need on your attitude indicator is 17 degrees. In an aircraft, you're flying and you don't want to be doing mental maths all the while, especially in busy environments and nearer to the ground. So there is a faster and shorter method to know uh, what your rate one turn is. And for that, obviously watch the next video on the flight school series. Let's continue. One last thing about turns is that not all turns are coordinated, meaning that the nose of the aircraft is not always pointed in the direction of turn itself, but rather they might be slipping or skidding inwards or outwards. And the best example to understand this is that once you are traveling really fast in forward direction and you take a really tight turn, you will be thrown outwards. If there is anything put on the dashboard of your car or obviously on your aircraft, and if it's thrown outwards or inwards, that is what is known as a non-coordinated turn. And we don't want that in an aircraft because the passengers will be banging their heads against the windows and there's something known as cargo shift. That is all the cargo in your cargo holds might shift in a sideways direction and that is really uh, what we don't want. And how do we coordinate a turn is basically using the rudders behind. Uh, if the, in the turn aircraft's nose is pointing outwards, we use the rudder to bring it back in the direction of turn and obviously, uh, on, on the contrary, if the nose is pointing two way inside the turn, we use the rudders once again deflect in such a way that the, we bring the nose back. And that is how you carry out a coordinated turn. I'll be demonstrating this also in the next episode on the flight school series. So you guys have noticed how many times I told that I'll be telling this in the next video, that in the next video. So obviously that is a really important one. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on that video whenever I upload, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and also you have turned on and activated the notification bell icon the next video is really important and that's it for today's video and if you guys were bored even a little bit don't worry the next video will be much more interesting because i'll be giving you uh, the same demonstrations from the cockpit point of view in the simulator obviously that like i had been doing in the previous videos until that video please keep safe stay safe and happy landings